Hey, so we're installing an optimum battery in a BMW E90 335. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, Interesting in this. So we're, we are putting in an Optima H7 yellow top. What I love about the yellow top and really all Optima batteries is they are 99 point whatever high percentage of virgin lead. They are virgin lead. So that means it's the most powerful cranking source for your car. These things come underrated and they still have a whopping amount of charging capacity. Charge capacity? Cranking power? These things make the car work real good. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. No, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people it, going. It, anyway, it, virgin lead, cast on straps, and that's you know, going through that Optima facility and seeing how these things are made was eye-opening. And so many of the failures in a battery happen because they get banged around, the internal welds start to, start to soften, the, the plates fall off, suddenly you're not working with the same number of cells that it was produced with. Cast on straps, that thing's not gonna come apart. So these things are wildly durable, even in the harshest of environments. This is one of our employees' road cars, and uh, as you can see by the skateboards, fishing poles, etc., in the trunk, this thing is probably not going to do a lot of off-roading. May do a little off-roading. I think the biggest challenge for this car will be neglect. We're, we're going to talk about how to install this thing. The mechanical stuff's pretty easy. It's just reverse of removal. But uh, you know, some additional concerns when you are installing an Optima battery or any battery, but again, we love Optimas for specific reasons, uh, that you've got to do a few things. And all this is super well documented. Just the basics of registering the battery. So when you install a new battery, uh, the, the cars that are E90 and newer, and I guess that really started in E60 maybe, um, but when it hit the three series, three, four series, when, you know, whatever we did around then, it started being, uh, we had a BMS, um, so a, a, an intel intelligent battery, battery module, yes. IBM. Battery you sure about that? Management battery management system, that's BMS. Right. That's anyway, we had a three-letter word at, that's this pack that sits on top of the battery that makes the charging system on the car smarter than it used to be. So as these cars have evolved, gotten more technically difficult, et cetera, um, you know, now the power management and being able to really squeeze all the last life out of that dying, dying, dying battery that you're taking out of the car means that it cranks more and more into it with the alternator because it's like, gosh, come on, man, keep, keep alive, stay with me. Don't you die on me, man. And we've got to register the battery, which is a nice way to say, uh, reset that. Now, I, now I've got this nice new Optima battery. It's got all the power in the world. Hey, man, take it easy on me. You don't have to throw all that amperage at me to keep me charged up. I'm here. I'm going to work for you. So registering the battery is important. Also, and this, this is minorly unique to the Optima or maybe an AGM, when you change battery types, there are different charging protocols. And again, this is in these newer cars. So we started having to register batteries in the three series world in E90 era, mid 2000s. And then we started having different charging protocols around that range, maybe a little bit newer, but we can use a Foxwell tool, sold at Vimworld.com, to look at the charging protocols how many amp hours this thing can take from the alternator, how much I can throw at it, and I can adjust that, and I can adjust it to say, hey, I've got a fancy new AGM battery in there, so make sure you charge it for that to make sure you maximize the life of the battery and maximize the power that you have inside the battery that you're feeding to the car. Austin, did you figure out how to get the battery out of the car? Let's do it. Everybody loves being watched when they work. Oh yeah, I just love the zoo. How many cranking amps is that? That's impressive. 1,000 cranking amps, 880 cold cranking amps, and I guarantee if you read that out, it's gonna make more than that. Underrate the battery. 
You're never going to let anybody down if you underrate the battery. Well, while Austin is prepping the car and doing all the hard work, I'm going to prep the battery for install. So what does that mean? Nothing. Because <laughs> because I, the cover's here. I'm, I'm going to leave on for the, for the safety as we get in there. I've, I've sparked the car or two by not keeping those covers installed. So I am going to leave those until the battery is permanently resting where it needs to go. Now, I would also say if I was installing a factory battery or a factory type replacement battery, I would also be thinking about where I would vent this thing, where I'm going to connect my vent tubes, which end, etc. But the Optima is sealed and it's a gel based AGM and I don't have to worry about spilling, about acid coming out, about where I need to vent it because it is a sealed battery. Just one of those things that makes it super nice because you know I've seen plenty of these cars as they get older uh, you know, the batteries, they live in a dark corner, nobody pays attention, and now I've got corrosion and a disaster in that corner. So having a sealed battery makes, makes life nice uh, for the ownership of the car. How's this going? Poorly. Is somebody going to make chicken salad out of this? All you needed was two tools, Austin. Self-proclaimed, all I need is two tools. Well, we came into it with four anyway. All right. Technically five, if you're including every single thing. Wow. That's, that's just such a good feeling right there. Yeah, pick, pick tool to make, oh wow. I know in the past I've just kind of laid that thing over and I know that's probably not the right way to do it, but it's the fast way to do it. Austin gets paid book rate, he doesn't care. But <laughs> you guys are getting paid? Austin doing it the right way. All right, so basically now that we've got this thing disconnected, um, we got kind of the stuff out of the way. Austin's gonna hold some wires. I'm gonna pull a battery out. I've done this a lot before because the E90 gives you a special joy. Watch your fingers. Of requiring the battery to unlock the car. Which makes that super fun when you have a dead battery. So replace your battery on an E90 before it goes dead. All right, old battery out. Fancy Optima going in. A little heavier than the factory battery, and I can tell that. Now, the reason it's heavier is all that lead. So not only is it virgin lead, they stuff more lead into it. That's why I can tell you that these ratings are underrated because there's a lot of lead and a lot of cranking capacity going back in this car. All right. Boom. In place. Now, reverse of removal. Let's lock that baby down. Yeah. While Austin's working on that, let's look at this Foxwell tool. Ooh. So I love the Foxwell tool. It's a, it's like our Autologic that we have sitting over there in the drawer, but the Autologic, Autologic's like five grand uh, and requires a subscription. This is, this unit, what is this? 600 bucks, 500 bucks? Uh, 400 bucks? 400 bucks. 399. $399.95, not really. But um, anyway, this is a fantastic tool. It has a lot of the capacity, the majority of the capacity of the AutoLogic that we use in the shop. And for a home tool, this thing is wildly powerful. So this is gonna allow us to do things like register the battery, change the coding procedures. Ooh, diagnostic port, what, this goes into the Foxwell and it goes into the old school diagnostic. If you're an E36 guy, you would know that this is a Pac-Man tool. Uh, Pac-Man? That's a little bit of useless knowledge from back in the day. And now we're going to the Bluetooth. But can I just stop you right there for a second? When people do this, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> Which is the dongle that plugs into the OBD2 port. Not using it right, Joe. <laughs> Found on newer cars since 1996, so for 30 years. All right, uh, but this thing's gonna be pretty easy. I can go ahead and plug in the dongle now, right? All OBD2 stuff located in this passenger kick well. This one has the cover pre-removed. Uh, thank you, Jake, for doing that. And it has a secondary cover on it, which also feels like it is pre-removed. So I just need to plug the dongle in, done. And we'll go through the process of turning this thing on and coating the battery and or the car for the battery once we got the juice. 
I remember having to do this in my E91 wagon because I had some sweet subwoofers and amplifier which kept killing my batteries because I never did what we're about to do. And registered them to the Never registered car. the battery. Yeah, I, I killed a battery in an E91 wagon because I didn't register. It takes, what, a couple months of typical use to kill, yeah, the, kill a brand new battery if you don't register it. So come on, let's go through the right process. Changing the battery is easy, but make sure you don't kill the battery. I think we're done with the install. Now it's just down to the coating. So I'll show you that real quick. Key in, car on. Wait for this thing to boot up. All right. What am I doing? I'm gonna go in here and do a diagnostic, yep. right? And I'm gonna say it's a BMW. Okay, smart VIN, let's see what we got. Reading my VIN information. Uh, that looks right. It's a three series, 335XI. Yes, it is sometime later. So special functions is where I would imagine I'm going here because I don't need to diagnose anything. You can tell me if I'm right or not. Maybe I should ask before I press battery. Register battery exchange. Oh, I'm flying through this. I'm going to call this fairly intuitive. James is really proud of himself right now. I am. What do you wish to do? Uh, exchange history, register battery exchange in service function. I would like to register a battery exchange. Higher, lower capacity. Ooh, look at that. Number three, enter battery exchange from normal lead acid to an AGM. I think we'll do that. Boom. Carry out the follow, following retrofitting into the programming system. Battery. Continue. All right. Should we do that? Uh, Go to register battery, battery. programming. Mm, or that. All right. So, what amp hours are on the battery we just installed? We've done the registry function, so all good there. Final warning. Change the vehicle commands. Yes. Turn off your engine. Turn on terminal. Fifteen ignition switch. So that's already Just done. Yeah. Yeah. Let's exceed 13 volts. So that means I need to put a charger on this. Yes. Two right one there, in the actually. back of the M2, one of those fancy new Optima digital 1200s. Hey, focus on your own shit. All right. Let's see. I am going to charge an Optima AGM goes through the process of analyzing the battery to check my health before it starts blasting in the amps. Yeah, this is, yeah, new digital 1200, not only charged traditional lead acid, also all the Optima protocols for an AGM, plus it has charging for the new line of Optima Lithium, which we're pretty excited about, QH6 coming, which is the DIN 6 size of a lithium battery at 15 pounds, which is going to make that lifting operation to get the battery in the trunk a lot easier, plus cut out about 50 pounds from the right rear corner of your car, which, you know, it's nice that it helps the cross weight and the rear balance, etc. but minus 50 pounds is pretty sweet in a, a car for performance as well, so. All right, so got our charger on, doing some quick coding for the 80 amp hour AGM. Again, scroll through the whole list to make sure you're choosing the right thing, not just what's on the screen in front of you. Rookie mistake. And my coding is successful. So now I'm charging at 80 amp hours as the battery would want. And I've registered my battery. And I'm ready to rock. And I'll tell you, with the weather we have coming, batteries get crushed in the winter. This is a very seasonal thing. Sure, you can lose a battery in the summer, but with the weather that we've had recently, uh, it's no surprise that we're doing a battery video because we have the opportunity to change batteries because we've had problems with batteries in a range of cars. So this car is a 07 
something like that. I don't know how many batteries it's been on, but you know, these things last four, five, six, seven years, two, two months if you don't register the battery. Yep. So uh, this thing is off for a long and fruitful life with the, what can, one can only imagine is neglect that this car will get for the next foreseeable future. All right, I'm gonna turn the ignition off and we're done. So I'm gonna turn off my Foxwell tool, unplug the dongle and return the car to Jake so he can get to work tomorrow in the very cold weather. Thanks, thanks for watching. Uh, we stumbled through this. Hey, this is my first rodeo on this car with this tool and we still figured it out and we've got the car set properly with this new Optima H7, so an upgrade in the battery, super cost effective, big lead capacity, big power, super robust, that thing is gonna last super well. Now this car is charging at the correct amp hours, the battery is registered. Again, you do those things on E90, mid-2000s, mid newer BMWs, the old stuff, it's gonna handle itself, and you know, what a great battery. This thing's gonna last a long time. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe. Phil does a better job than I do. So if you want real tech tips, he's the guy. I can throw in some flavor here and there. So hope you like my video. Ready to go? Should be an awesome crazy weekend. We are ready to kill it this year. It's good. It's gonna be a wild ride.